Dark matter is something astronomers have had to include in order to explain how galaxies rotate and why they don't fly apart. It is therefore with great surprise that astronomers announced the discovery of the first galaxy with no dark matter. Other scientists quickly tried to pour cold water on the idea, suggesting the galaxy was much closer than they claimed and therefore had to have dark matter. In order to settle this discussion, they attempted to determine its distance once and for all and in the process uncovered another galaxy devoid of dark matter, right next to the original one. The type of galaxy and its location seemed to hint at the notion that the galaxies are actively being powered by Berkeley currents. According to mainstream science, all galaxies should contain vast amounts of dark matter, with only one exception. Galactic mergers and gas stripping can isolate large amounts of normal matter, and this matter would cause vast clumps of gas to form which could collapse to create new galaxies, which would be free from any dark matter. Some argue that because we have not been able to find any of these types of galaxies, that dark matter cannot exist. This changed when astronomers announced the first dark matter galaxy NGC 1052 DF2 had been discovered. Astronomers immediately started to observe the galaxy and its parent galaxy NGC 1052 and they wanted to measure the distance to it and hence reconstruct the total mass. Their initial findings yielded a galaxy that must be devoid of dark matter. But the measurements of its surface brightness fluctuated so doubts continued to persist. A separate team claimed that the galaxy belonged to a closer foreground group and this implied that it would therefore have normal dark matter distribution. So Hubble was used to measure the other galaxies NGC 1052DF4 was used to settle the controversy. Using the tip of the red giant branch method, they determined that its distance was some 60 million light years, and this meant it was consistent with no dark matter. More curious is that when they examined the galaxy, they realized something odd was going on. Firstly, their measurements indicated that these galaxies could not have formed due to gas stripping as the gas should contain high metallicity for their mass and this was not the case for these galaxies and there was no evidence of debris in the vicinity of either galaxy and they are also part of a large globular cluster. These galaxies also have a much lower luminosity and yet reside in a cluster that is very luminous. The rotational curves are unlike most galaxies in other words, the outer part is travelling slower than the inner part, similar to our solar system. So as much as we would like to hail the success of not having dark matter, this does present an interesting problem for the electric universe model. In Don Scott's model, the rotation is driven by the incoming current. This causes the entire galaxy to rotate at the same speed. And if we assume a model where the galaxy forms in isolation, like Alvin's model or Eric Lerner's hybrid model, then the rotation is caused by the rotating magnetic field. Well, in Alvin's model, there is no mechanism to allow for this rotation, as actually he assumes that the infalling material would cause the rotation and that the rotation would generate the current, and this would not create the shape of galaxies that we see. So can we explain the change in rotation using either Don or Eric's model? If we start with Eric's model, then we would expect there to be periods when the plasmoid does not exist, and this could cause a change in the rotation speed. The problem is that this should happen more often, and we should therefore be able to see many more examples of this, and we don't. If we examine Don's model, then the problem becomes how do we explain a rotation rate difference between the inner and outer part if they are all driven by Birkeland currents. Now initially you would have to say that we cannot, but at the moment we are only considering this as a perfect system. 
and a clue might lie in the fact that these galaxies are not as bright as the surrounding clusters. Is it possible that something has shattered the connection for these two galaxies to the main Birkeland current? Or could it be, as I discussed a little while ago, that the galaxies form via ejection and that the plasma cloud only starts to form into a plasmoid once it intersects a Birkeland filament? And did this one happen to be on a broken or a much smaller one in comparison to the normal? This could explain why the whole galaxy is far less luminous, as the current is significantly diminished, and this would mean that the magnetic field is much smaller, and therefore only able to drive a much smaller fraction of the disk, causing a difference in rotation from the outer part to the inner part. Is this the first proof that galaxies are actively driven, and when the current is removed the whole system slowly grinds to a halt? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.